Brand new Apex 300 from Bluetti is a top of the line unit that is quite efficient, very expandable to adapt to different power needs, and has some incredible features that most other units do not have. But there are three main issues that I have which could be nails in the coffin for the Apex 300. Blue Eddy needs to impress me with this unit in order to get my recommendation. My name is Ben and this is the Minute Man Solar YouTube channel. The Apex 300 truly does impress me in many ways, but I don't know that I can give it a full recommendation because of the issues that I found. I've been testing this unit for a while. Blue Eddy was nice enough to send this out to me in order to give you an honest review. I do not have to give a positive review in any way, shape or form. My opinion cannot be purchased. That's how it with all of my videos. But the first thing I want to go over is the inverter. It gives you the option to switch between 120 and 240 volt split phase power. That's the kind of power that you need to run heavy appliances such as a well pump or a, an electric water heater or an electric stove or just to run power through your whole house. But you can switch this to single phase power. But when this is in single phase mode, I can get 1,920 watts out of these two outlets and then the same out of these two outlets because the entire inverter is rated to 3,840 watts. And in either mode, the TT30 RV plug is rated to the full 30 amps for a full 3,600 watts in case you wanna run this on an RV. But what's so strange to me why they did this is because when you're in split phase mode, you still have access to use these 120 volt outlets. This is a really big deal because with the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3, which is one of the main competitors to this unit, you do not get the option to have both 120 volt and 240 volt when you're using their split phase power. But what makes so many units so good on the market is that they're still portable like this, but can be expanded all the way to be able to run a house. And the Apex 300 also falls into this category because you can actually stack up to three of these units together and get a total of 11.52 kilowatts of output power. It's basically the same as having a full 50 amp output, but it's just shy of that full 12,000 watts. So I don't think that's a huge knock on the unit compared to other units on the market. Just like the Delta Pro 3, you need three of them to get 12,000 watts of output. But that's gonna be for AC power only. There's no DC output on this unit. For that, you have to buy their DC hub. Now there's some pros and cons to this. The first con being obviously you have to buy this and then plug it in. But the pros is that you get some incredible power out of this DC hub. Now it has this latch right on the back so that way it can grab right onto either of the handles. And the cable is long enough Whereas this is mounted on the other side, it can still reach around and go directly into this battery port. With it, you get two DC cigarette lighter ports rated to 10 amps each. And then as well, two USB-A and two USB-C. You simply plug it in and push the power button on, but this is the coolest feature right here. Now this is a high amperage DC output here that does both 12 volts at 50 amps or 24 volts at 25 amps. So if you have a fuse block in your RV or your van or whatever rig you're running where you need to run a lot of DC equipment, you can use a common Anderson connector, run this to your fuse block, and then have all the DC power you need to run to all of your DC appliances. I mostly stick to running everything off of the outlets on the front and the side of the unit. And with that, what I tested was that I got 88% efficiency out of this unit, doing about a 0.2C discharge. What's more, the idle power consumption is surprisingly low on the Apex 300 at only 21 watt hours per hour. All that means is if I leave the AC output turned on, it's gonna use 21 watts constantly to keep everything turned on, including the screen, the inverter, the fans, all of it. It's not unheard of for some units to have anywhere from 50 to 70 watts that they're drawing, so 21 watts just to keep it turned on is actually very good. There is also an eco mode, which is already turned on when you get your Apex 300. And what that means is over a four hour period, if it doesn't draw more than 10 watts from any of these outlets, or up to five watts using the DC hub, it's gonna automatically turn the inverter off to make sure that it's not just wasting battery. I personally choose to turn that off because I don't want to have to worry about this turning off, such as an example of using a sump pump. Now the alternative to that is just by using it as a UPS, which means you have it plugged into a wall outlet, you don't have eco mode on, and at any moment the sump pump turns on, this is going to run it, and then the grid is going to recharge it. That way, if the grid goes down, this will be able to continue running that sump pump without any issue at all. Now in terms of the battery, they're using the same battery that's in their B300K. That's their new standard battery that they're pushing with all of their units. Technically, it has 2,764.8 watt hours. I don't know why they called it that. You can basically classify it as a 
7 kilowatt hour battery. It'd even be fine to call it a 2.8 kilowatt hour battery. But you can have up to six more expansion batteries on every single Apex 300, which means if you have three Apex 300s, you can have 18 expansion batteries. That's gonna be 19.3 kilowatt hours per unit or 58 kilowatt hours for an entirely expanded system. Now, if you already have some B300S batteries, you can still attach up to six of those, or you can do up to four of their B300 batteries. There is a way to connect the B230 batteries, which I believe are now discontinued, but it didn't have any information on how many of those you could connect to the unit. Now the B300K battery and the battery inside of the Apex 300 is using prismatic LFP or lithium iron phosphate cells. That means you're easily going to get 6,000 cycles before you have enough degradation that you're going to start to notice that it's not lasting as long. And when it comes to charging, the Apex 300 is one of the most versatile charging systems out there. Just like you see right now, if I'm wall charging with 120 volts, I can get up to 1,440 watts but we're not actually getting that right now. I'm getting about 100 watts less, closer to 1,340 watts. So keep that in mind, it's not the full rated input that you see on the spec sheet, but it is pretty close. And it does have an optional 240 volt charger where you can do a full 3,840 watts to go into the battery. That means you can charge this in basically an hour. Now for the solar input, this is where it gets really interesting. There are two XT60 solar input ports and each one is rated from 12 to 60 volts and 20 amps. We see basically the exact same charge controller on many other units out there, including the Anker Solux F3800. Now the biggest downside to using a 60 volt charge controller is that 400 watt or even 200 watt and 100 watt solar panels do not work well with the 60 volt input limitation. The number you have to look at is called the open circuit voltage or the VOC. So if you just look that up on the back of a solar panel, you'll see that even a 100 watt or 200 watt panel is typically around 21 volts. For a residential 400 watt panel, it's very commonly around 37 volts. So I can't even take two 400 watt panels and link them together in series because then it'll be at 72 volts and that will burn out the charge controller. Each one of those charge controllers is rated to 1200 watts, totaling 2400. The only solar panel that you can use in order to get the maximum 1200 watt input on those XT60 ports is from Bougie RV. I'll have a link down below but it's their 200 watt bifacial solar panel and it's a specific one because they make variations. But Blue Eddy did provide a fix for that. They have what's called their Solar X 4K charging box. Now, unfortunately I didn't get one and I don't know why they didn't send one to me because I always gripe about the solar input and I've always said solar input is the lifeblood of solar generators. But it is an additional charge controller that you add externally to the Apex 300 and it'll give you up to 500 volts of solar input, allowing four kilowatts of solar to go into this unit. That's absolutely incredible. I don't know why they didn't just include that in here because that would have been the coolest thing to see. That 4,000 watts built in would have been incredible. But all of that solar put together, you can get technically up to 6,400 watts of solar input. There isn't a solar generator on the market of this size that can go that high. So that is very impressive. You can also get an alternator charger for this and charge it up to 560 watts from your car. So if you're van lifing or traveling a lot and wanna charge this up, that would be a really good option to get. It also has a bypass mode using their P050A adapter. It simply allows you to have fast charging that goes into the side and you can plug that directly into high amperage outlets and you can get up to 6,000 watts of bypass mode using that cable in 120 volt mode or even all the way up to 12,000 watts of bypass if you're in a 240 volt 50 amp outlet. And like I mentioned with the UPS function, this will turn over from using grid power to battery power in less than 20 milliseconds. So this is a really good option to have things plugged into it, wait for the grid to go out and it keeps running it. That way you don't have to worry about it if you're away from home. Now one of the coolest ways of charging, it even talks about it in their user manual, is you can just have an external battery, say like a server rack battery, plug that into the side of here, and it will discharge at a rate of a maximum of 60 amps from the battery into here and recharge the system. The ultimate hack here would be to get external server rack batteries where you put a separate charge controller on it that can go up to 500 volts, be dumping solar power into those batteries and then have those batteries charging the Apex 300. Or even the coolest hack you could do would be to take an EG4 charge verter, take a battery expansion cable for this and cut it in half. 
add an Anderson connector to the charge verter and to that battery cable, put them together, and then you can actually backfeed power through a charge verter up to that 60 amp rating from a gas generator and fast charge the whole thing. That's the only way you're gonna be able to take dirty energy from a non-inverter gas generator and get it into this. If you wanna charge this from a gas generator, it must be an inverter gas generator that has a total harmonic distortion or THD less than 3%, which is really hard to find. Now to put multiple Apex 300s together, you have to use their A1 hub. It's basically a center point for it all to join together and then you get that 50 amp output from it. If you were to fully expand the whole system, you'd have 11.52 kilowatts of output, 58 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, and 19.2 kilowatts of solar charging. For reference, the average American home uses between 30 and 40 kilowatt hours a day. There's also really no such thing as an average American home, because if your house uses any type of electric heat, whether that's an electric water heater, an electric dryer, or you have a large air conditioner, you're gonna be using a lot more than that. But if your house mostly uses natural gas or propane for anything heat related, then there's a high probability you're much closer to that 30 kilowatt hours a day. This would be able to handle two days of non non-stop normal power usage if it were fully expanded. And then as soon as you have one sunny day making 19.2 kilowatts of solar, this would very quickly recharge the whole system. You can even link all of that up to their ATI smart distribution box, which is one of the only systems on the market where you can take an off-grid solar generator and use solar panels that have micro inverters on them. That means if you have solar on your house already, there's technically a way to take those solar panels and attach them to the Apex 300 and use it as a mobile backup system and it's not going to affect how your net metering works between you and your power company. I don't know of any other system that uses something like that, so it's very cool that Blue Eddy is introducing that. Now there's a five year warranty with every Apex 500, which has become a standard in the market. I would like you guys to comment down below what kind of warranty service you've had with Blue Eddy. I know in the past they had horrible, horrible communication, but they seem to have gotten a lot better lately. Now this is 84 pounds, which is enough for me to move around on my own. Just keep that in mind, it is pretty heavy. Now this does have all the same protections you would typically want, such as low temperature, high temperature shutoff. This is meant to be run inside I would definitely try to keep it in a cool, dry area. But this even has the UL2743 listing and the UL1741, which is actually really impressive for a portable unit to have those UL listings. Now, I haven't had any issues using the app. I first connected it with Bluetooth and then it connected it to my Wi-Fi. And as long as my Wi-Fi is running in my house and this is turned on, I can control this 100% from anywhere in the world. So it would be a really smart idea if you're gonna control this using Wi-Fi, is have your Wi-Fi plugged into this in the UPS function. So that way, if the grid power goes out, you still have Wi-Fi to control this from anywhere in the world. It's got fairly good response time. I'm gonna turn on the AC output. It takes a few seconds to relay that, but not very long at all. And you can go into the advanced settings and change all of the features that you want, including how long the screen stays on. I like to switch mine to never, so that's what it's set up to. You can turn on eco mode. The app is very simple and straightforward, and it hasn't had any problems ever since they did their latest update. One of the most surprising things is that this is on pre-sale right now, and they've had almost 7,000 people put a deposit down for ordering the Apex 300. But as a special treat, because you've made it this far in the video, there is one thing that truly sets this apart above everything else on the market. And that is, it can wall charge with 120 volt power while in split phase mode. So just like you see right now, I've got this in split phase mode and I have the AC power on. I have 240 volt power on the side of this and I'm still charging over 1300 watts. Now, previously, only the Delta Pro Ultra from EcoFlow, that was the only unit that could wall charge from 120 volts and output 240 volts. But the Delta Pro Ultra is an extremely large system. Now the Apex 300 is here and it's much more portable and you have that feature built in, which is seriously, truly incredible. It's very rare to find that. So that's the first thing that I would put on my major pros for the Apex 300. The second being that it has a split phase power all in one unit. The third being that you can get up to 6.4 kilowatts of solar. The fourth pro being that you can get up to over 19 kilowatt hours of battery capacity just by using this. The fifth thing being that there's so many ways to charge this. And the sixth thing being that you have their ATI smart distribution box to use that with microinverter solar panels. No other system can do that. But the three big issues that I have that nearly make this a deal breaker for me is first, the 240 volt charger is not included. Second, the Solar X4K charger for solar input, not included. That should have absolutely been built into this unit. I don't know why they would even contemplate having that as an external item that you have to pay extra for. And third, 
is we have no idea what the price is on this. So we don't know if it's going to be a good deal for all of these features. As of right now filming this video, there's only a pre-order deposit option. Now, once I have pricing on this, it'll be on my free solar generator comparison chart, which I'll have linked down below. You can see all of the specs and how this compares head to head with everything else on the market that's of a similar size. That's 100% free for you to use, as well as I'll have any links and coupon codes that I have access to in the description down below. But overall, with how efficient the inverter is, how low the idle power consumption is, being able to charge with 120 volt power while putting out 240, having 240 split phase power built into the system with massive battery expandability, solar expandability, and then even lots of different ways to charge the system up, I definitely give this a full thumbs up with a slight notch down because they should have absolutely done better with the solar. Now, the easiest way to run this whole system off grid without having to do any permits is by using an interlock switch and the 240 volt plug that's on the side here. All that means is that you're gonna turn off grid power and turn on off grid power. But one of the trickiest things can be a ground mount that allows you to set up your panels very easily and quickly. So I'm gonna include a video right here of my patent pending Minuteman solar panel stands that allows you to bypass all the permitting and headaches of setting up solar. You can have all the off grid solar that you need. It's portable to take with you. And it's even easier and more affordable than doing your own system or buying folding solar panels.